So, a lot of people are wondering if they should get a game design degree. And I'm joined by James, who worked on Need for Speed Rivals, and I'd love to hear your thoughts, James. Game design degrees, are they ever worth having? They can be, uh, but you have to weigh the pros and cons. Uh, the con being, they're extremely expensive. Very rarely are you going get, to get an affordable game design program. Uh, and the other side of it is, every game design program and education path is different. Uh, so you have to make sure you're picking the one that fits your, your needs and your career goals best. Interesting, interesting. Have you ever hired someone because they had a degree? Or if not, what do you look for when you hire? Yeah, I don't hire someone because they have a degree. Uh, that might get their foot in the door. Uh, and it's especially useful when a recruiter is looking at their CV uh, yep. to understand, do they have the basics? Uh, and usually what it helps do is get them uh, to a place where they can talk about game design and game development with a bit of knowledge and they've done a bit of it themselves in school and they have some thoughts. They're not straight off the street yeah. trying to become a game developer. But that said, what I look for is someone who can build trust in that I know I can hand them a part of the game, big or small, and give them some ownership over it rather than have to micromanage everything. And usually the game development programs help give enough grounding and enough expectations around what game development is that they can do that. Interesting, interesting. What are the benefits uh, when, when looking at a portfolio or something like that? What are the benefits and how much benefit do you get from having a game design degree? Similar question, but, you know, yeah. phrased differently. So the big benefit is, I think there's two probably, but the biggest one is you've done it, right? Okay. It's hard to, to do these things on your own. Uh, some people just, they can't do the self-started version and the self-taught version. Yeah. And a, an educational path is going to run you through the basics. And hopefully the best versions of these are going to get you hands on with a team. You're going to work with other people. You're going to be able to speak to what it means to be a game developer once you've left school. Interesting. So uh, next question is, what are some red flags when I look for game design schools? What are the things I should watch out for? <laughs> um, anything you can find out about their grads, where they've gone and where if they have a good placement rate. Uh, but ultimately, you need to understand what they're going to teach you. Okay. And there should be very clear uh, documentation you can find about what the curriculum is, what kind of classes you're going to get, how it pertains to game development, be it design, code, art, so that you can understand how that fits with your career goals. If you want to be a game designer or a game artist and they're going to teach you nothing but coding, it could be a good program, but it's completely wrong for you. That said, they could have a whole bunch of stuff in there that doesn't make any sense to you. Uh, and if you can check it and say, yeah, none of this stuff fits with game design or game development, it might be a bogus program. They're all different. It's not like you, you're getting a law degree where law is kind of the same thing, but there's a certain yeah. amount of prestige with certain schools. Game design and game development programs are wildly different from one school to the next. Interesting, interesting. So what are the most common mistakes when people want to be game designers? You know, they make mistakes along the way. What are those common mistakes? So I think a big push for someone that wants to be a game designer is trying to be a game designer for their first job. Uh, if uh, they want to do it professionally, it's easy to say, yep, this is the only thing I, I'm, I'm not going to take any other jobs. I'm just going to be a game designer. Game design is an incredibly niche part of the industry. It's a small part. And yeah, there are some junior game design jobs, but there's a lot of other paths. If your goal is to become a game designer, plan a path to get there. Yeah. Don't say this has to be where I start. So you can get in through testing. You can get in potentially through production. You can get in through a lot of different ways that might have more entry-level roles because a game designer has a very important role on the team and you have to have someone who knows what the heck they're doing <laughs> if you yeah. want to have that job so it's it's easy to get fixated on this all or nothing and say i have to be this yeah uh, and i think the other side of it is uh, a lot of people will say if i've done school that's all i need well no uh, you, you need to show more than just what you've done in school because you're still competing with everyone else that's graduated one of those programs they all have yeah. probably a similar looking portfolio you need to show what your specialty is what your passions are what you're going to excel in that's what people want to know uh, about you as a, a junior and as you're, as you're starting to get into game design what i found here is that there is a big misunderstanding so first of all people don't understand that that uh game design is like a thing where you actually just design the game design is a job where you're not doing the code uh you're actually just coming up with the uh, ideas, the gameplay, and how the game interacts, and all that stuff. All that is design, and it's not the art either. And there's a lot of confusion. Design is this wrong word almost. Um, but 
then there's this there's this complete misunderstanding. I think you're getting to the heart of this. That design is an easy way to get other people to make your game ideas without having to do the hard work. Where, <laughs> you know, for <laughs> for us, we have found out that game design is possibly the hardest job on the entire team. You know, it's it's so much real hard work, good communication, good humility. It's really hard to get a good game designer. Yeah, it, it takes experience. Uh, even if you've had a couple years of game design under your belt, you you, you don't even know what you don't know yet. Yeah. It, it is a big field. I won't say it's the hardest part of game development. Game development is shockingly hard. <laughs> from we find terms. that out every a, single day. <laughs> it is very difficult. Uh, it, there was a quote, I can't remember the exact quote, but it's like building a, a bridge while writing an opera. Like it's extremely yeah. technical and it's extremely creative at the same time. Oh man. Uh, and I, yeah, I think you touched on that really good point of a lot of people don't understand what game designers do. Uh, and a lot yeah. of people either think, oh, you make the art or you make the code or, oh, you just have all the fun ideas. <laughs> in reality, your ideas aren't that important. Uh, in, in reality, the best thing a game designer is doing is bringing together all of the, the skill and passion of their team. And you might have the best idea, but hopefully what you're doing is tapping into all of the ideas and focusing them on the right spot at the right time so you get the best result. So I want to show the viewers, uh, this is a game we're working on here at P1, and uh, there's 168 people involved in the project. And you might think, well, this looks like a very simple game. And I, I get shocked every single day how much goes into how little in this industry. And the number one thing I would say is don't rush, get, get humility, and, uh, you know, how do I say this? Embrace the journey because it's so worth it and it's so amazing. But if you're in a rush, you really just never get anywhere but uh, get to disappointment quickly, you know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I think a lot of people that are new to game development in general think they're just going to be able to slap something together and it'll be ready to go and fun. Yeah. Uh -uh. It takes so much work to get there. <laughs> absolutely. So what do you think the best skill for a game designer is? There's a lot that is important, but the single best skill is communication, hands oh. down. Uh, a game designer mm -hmm. has to understand not simply how to communicate what they're thinking and what yeah. they want to happen as a design, but they also have to be able to listen and absorb what the team is saying, understand the, the problems that they're being uh, highlighted by their team, understand what's happening in the team and see what's going on so you can communicate to the people, say, oh, we need to change course or we need to iterate on this. If you can't communicate as a game designer, you better be working as a solo indie dev because <laughs> mm -hmm. you yeah. need to be able to talk. You need to be able to hear what people are saying and communicate with them in a way that they can understand what is and isn't important. Uh, a lot of people will think, oh, yeah, I just have to say the things and people will, will just do the thing I say. <laughs> a lot of the time, yeah. even just getting your idea across to people, it, it takes both the skill of being able to say it clearly in a way that can be understood, but the persistence to keep communicating it over and over. Uh, I find that you have to repeat something five, six, seven times to your team because they're all going to hear it in slightly different ways or slightly different times and the message can, can fragment. So it's oh, good man. for you to be able to repeat and keep your, your team on point and focus on a message. Okay, I'm gonna rapid fire. You are, you, you. I'm glad we're like so on the same page. We're discovering this, this uh, so deeply here. Is that um, when we look for game designers, it's not those people who are good at pen and paper, but the good human beings that care about people and who are good listeners and are deeply empathetic. They tend to make the the best game designers in the world. In 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 our experience, it's interesting. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, um, what kind of experience do you need to get a job in game design? It can vary a lot. Uh, the best experience you can have is making games, uh, as goofy as that sounds. Yeah. Uh, if you want to jump into game design straight away, you have to prove that you know how to make games. Uh, it, it's potentially easier to come in through the art path with you know, similar but non-game development related art experience, and same with code. Even production, you may have similar but not game development management skills. Game design, you have to show that you can design games. Board games, paper prototypes, uh, stuff you made in Unity or Unreal, anything you can show that says, I understand how to create fun, I understand player psychology, I understand rule sets, that cool. is what you need. And is relocating important to becoming a game designer? Uh, becoming a game designer, no. Um, uh, I guess fact, landing a it's, job. <laughs> it's, it's very hard, in, in fact, unless you're willing to pay completely out of pocket. Yeah. And like, very few companies are going to want to bring you across international lines. The visas may not even be present for the junior jobs. Uh, but that said, if you're in some of the bigger countries that are denser countries for development, 
you may have to move to a bigger city for sure, but I wouldn't expect you'd move out of country for your first few years at least. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, so um, another one is, uh, what do you think is the best way to learn it? If you were to start all over right now, what would what path would you craft for yourself? Ah, oh, starting now is amazing. Uh, when I started 20 years ago, uh, you couldn't just download Unreal. <laughs> yeah. Like that is the cutting edge industry technology and you can just use it. Anyone yeah. can use it, right? That is amazing. Uh, I probably would still have followed the path I went in terms of working with a team. I did okay. it through school. I'm not sure I'd do that because it was crazy expensive. Uh, <laughs> and there's so many resources out there that people can learn and come together with, be it yeah. teams like this on, on Discord, uh, be it mod teams. And you can start making stuff right away. Uh, you could make, even back in the day, you could make stuff like StarCraft mods and whatever. Today, it's even wider and there's more accessible tools. Yeah. Start doing that and start making things in someone else's uh, tool set first. And yeah. then you can branch out and say, I'm going to make my own stuff and make little prototypes and fun little games that, that really explore your ideas and can build a portfolio around. I would suggest people um, with three tools that I think are just really great today. If you're just getting started, build a Minecraft server, build something in Roblox, build something in one of those platforms and watch how people interact with it. It'll just blow your mind and you'll get so much knowledge of how people actually interact with your ideas that's so valuable. And you can get this at scale because you're creating value for Minecraft. You're creating value for Roblox. Some of these platforms will just promote you a lot for creating that for them. Don't worry about the money there, but you know, go ahead and just make something and see how people interact. It just, it, it, it allowed me to learn so much to watch how people interacted with my servers and how they did the, their stuff in a 3D space, you know? Yeah, I'd also say the old school route of pen and paper games has a lot of value to learn game design. Interesting. Just playing like Dungeons and Dragons or a Shadowrun or any of those types of systems, it peels back a lot of the, the visuals and it exposes you to the rule set. Like, why are you rolling D6s and not D20s? Why is the target a seven? Uh, you can just be the player, let alone the, the dungeon master, and be exposed to the mechanics of game design in a very abrupt way. Oh, wow, I have to understand how games function now. Playing those games will teach you a lot about what it means to structure games, what it means for players to go through an experience. Yeah. If you can run a session, do that. But even get involved and play those games with your friends, it's going to expose you to a lot of the functions of game design. Awesome. Fantastic. I don't know how I'm going to get through all these questions. There's so much goodness in here. I want to say that if you guys want to join us, uh, check out the link up there. We're a great opportunity if you want to learn how to work with people. If you want to be a game designer, if you don't have social skills, it's not going to work because you need to be convincing people of your ideas. The best way to do that is on a team, and you're welcome to join us uh, in what we're doing if you're interested. I want to see if I can get a few more in there before we end the video here. Uh, what do you think uh, are the biggest challenges faced by people who want to become game designers today? What are the, what are the distractions? What are the challenges today? Uh, if you want to be a professional game designer, uh, it's a massive field uh, of competition. Getting okay. your first job, you're competing against literally millions of people who think games are cool. I'll be a game designer. <laughs> right. And I think game designers, especially a lot of people come to the conclusion, I'll be a game designer because code is hard and I'm not artistic. So yeah. I'll be a designer. That is not how you approach a career path. Let me tell you. <laughs> uh, so, and I kind of mentioned this in the previous part where you need to build a portfolio that helps you stand out. Yeah. So it, it's important to, to understand that you're competing with a lot of other people but also when you are trying to get a job, it's not about convincing someone that you should be worth a paycheck. It's convincing someone that you're trustworthy enough to be in charge of a chunk of the game. That's super mm. crazy expensive and risky for someone, right? Millions of dollars you could ruin, right? right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, and, and so being able to show that you're safe hands and that you have knowledge and experience is what you need to do. And you need to build a way to communicate that in a portfolio, in a CV, and then ultimately in your interview skills. Interesting, interesting. Okay, so guys, we'll see you in the next video since we've run out of time about what a game designer actually is. We will have that one right here in the middle of the screen for you next time.